do we have to ratchet up our expectation of volatility and maybe ratchet down our expectation of return given the heightened tensions we're seeing in the world? Well, I think what it does is it increases some risk of, of yields moving uh, sharply lower. Uh, and it really is, this geopolitical uh, issue is really the only risk uh, that will cause that to happen. I, I think if yields were to fall too far uh, right now, what would happen is that, you know, obviously people are expecting the Fed will cut rates, and, and that will actually put a floor on kind of the longer-term rates. Uh, so as we, as we think about it, um, Geopolitical risk is that thing that can drive rates lower uh, on a sustained basis. And, and this is obviously a, a geopolitical risk. Now, the Federal Reserve, like everything else, probably has its eye on what's going on in the Middle East. But it has its eye on a lot of things. Do you believe the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates either next week or multiple times this year? Uh, I, I don't think so. I, I think, you know, when you read Powell's comments, he had two choices. Choice one was ignore everything going on short term in the world that's got volatility, that, which, by the way, rate cuts can't help, or address them when you're talking and then get on to kind of like your longer term viewpoint. Uh, he addressed them and moved on to his longer term viewpoint. Uh, he didn't mention the word rate cut. Uh, he really just said that they were going to do what was necessary to keep the economic uh, uh, recovery going. Um, that, I, th I thought that was his job. Uh, so he basically just wouldn't it be it. nice if one time the Fed we're going to cut rates actually use plain English they're never going to do that so the hint they're never going to but guys it like you get paid to dive into the language and sort of figure uh, out what they're going to do and then guys like me get paid to interview guys like you about what they're going to do it seems pretty inefficient doesn't it it really does actually they just tell us it's <laughs> cut out the supply chain yeah so but <laughs> we're the two people in the supply chain so let's we let's like it we like by things. the way we like this supply yes. chain things are working very well just so you know mr powell okay, this works <laughs> is the federal reserve and i asked this of a guest at the beginning of the show given given the news that we're seeing today with these tankers ostensibly attacked uh in the persian gulf is the fed big enough important enough powerful enough to override this Hong Kong, Brexit, and all the other strains in the world? Uh, I don't think so. And that's also something for Powell to consider as you move uh, into the next meeting. If you move towards kind of a rate cut, what happens if you cut rates and it doesn't work? Uh, you know, we don't have a lot of room to cut rates. Uh, they don't really want to expand the balance sheet anymore. Uh, so if you have those two things happening, uh, you know, for the Fed, they've really got to, they've really just got to focus on, you know, what's the disaster plan if they're not successful? And what is that? Uh, that's a great question. I think that the answer is don't cut rates and hope things get better. Do you think they will get better? Is the economy I, okay? Is it? So I, I drove on the New Jersey Turnpike on the way up here. My apologies. In the morning. Uh, did you see my hubcap? Can so, you find, did you pick it up? I mean, as it's usual, out there somewhere. As usual, I got stuck behind someone who didn't want to pass uh, uh, you know, large trucks. But, but, but no, no, this is an important point you're making. Anecdotally, I tell you, Drew, you drove up the turnpike, as did I this morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. It was packed. Packed with trucks. I mean, I, I looked out, and all I could see was tractor-trailer trucks, and I'm thinking, I'm going to have to weave my way through yes. these big boys. It's amazing how much it's traffic there is. It's hard to do that when you're going so fast, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 66. Yeah. 66 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> no, but the point is, there's so much traffic out there from a truck perspective it's hard to look at that anecdotally i know it's one little area of the world and say things are slowing down yeah it's it's it seems unrealistic doesn't it and you know i think if you look at everything going on if you look at the state of the u.s consumer you know there was very little evidence that the u.s consumer should be slowing um there's very little evidence that suggests that you know anything is going wrong and we're not seeing any layoffs so if things are weakening why isn't someone getting laid off somewhere yeah uh, and in fact it's going the other way as we did in our rbi the other day the jolts survey showed that the rate of hiring in april was the highest ever recorded by the jolts survey yes and there are still many many more people or job openings than there are unemployed in this country and it's been persistent for about a, you know a, a couple months now so uh, if something's going wrong with this economy i let, let's hope it keeps going wrong